that's trouble. What's up everybody? Super excited about the video today. Prodigy Disc Golf actually sent me out six of their discs. Um, their whole A series, which is all of their approach discs, and even the Distortion, which is their Kevin Jones collaboration approach disc that they have. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm Jordan from Ginger Snap Disc Golf, by the way. Glad you're here. But I just want to give a huge shout out to them uh, and a huge thank you to Prodigy for doing this. They're super awesome to work with. Um, they're a well-known company. I know you've all heard of them. Honestly, it's an honor to get to represent them and work with some of their discs. So what we're gonna do today is play nine holes out here at Patriot Hills Disc Golf Course. It's in Summersville. Summersville, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm gonna play nine holes with these discs, but the kicker is I'm gonna use these discs in order. So on hole one, I'm gonna use the A1, hole two, the A2, all the way up through hole six where I'm gonna use the distortion. And then the last three holes, I'm gonna use whichever one that I want. If I don't shoot under par and I end up having to give one of these away, I'll let you pick which one you want. And all you have to do is comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll figure out a winner in a couple of weeks. Before we hop into the video, I wanna show you all a video of the unboxing, show you the updated flight numbers of all of these discs. That is from their most recent 2024 flight number chart. And then I'll talk about how they feel, how they throw, all of those things once we get into the video. All right, we're back. Hole one, Patriot Hills, Summersville, Alabama. I think that's how you say it, Summersville. It's 270 up the hill and like a really, really sharp left turn. Um, it's definitely gonna play a little bit more uphill. I threw some warm-up shots and it's playing further than 270 for sure. All right, hole one, A1. We got up here pin high in a really bad wind with probably a, I don't know, 20 foot putt. Oh no, good tree. All right, we're par through hole one, hole two, A2. Let's see what it does. Head straight, 250 feet, a little bit of a headwind. Should be an easy birdie. I just yanked that so bad. But that somehow ended up with a look. Something to note is that A2 is in the 300 soft plastic. All the other ones are in the 500 plastic, which if you don't know with Prodigy, the order of their plastic is all the way from 200 to like 750. And each time they go up, the grade of the plastic is a little bit higher quality. So 200 is like a lesser base plastic. 300 is base plastic. 400 is like a translucent premium. Their 500 plastic is like a shinier, grippier, more durable than 400 and then all the way up to 750 is like their highest quality plastic. And they have a lot of other plastics as well. All right, I went past the basket, but I should have a straddle putt. Dude. So the A2, I'm sure most people have tried out at least once. Um, it definitely has a similar feel to the A1, but honestly, I think they're pretty close to the same mold, except the A1 just has a bead. And the A1 definitely has a lot more bite than the A2 does. The A2 wants to go a little bit further and straighter. The A1, when it hits the ground, it just wants to hit the ground hard and even get like some pretty good ground action and skip as well. So it's definitely more stable. All right, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really nervous about hole three, like 180 feet, but it plays kind of uphill in this, the initial gap. I don't know if I can explain this better, but like you have this, which is like less than my wingspan of a gap to get. There is a big hyzer out, but I don't know if I can get to the basket from there. Disc is on the line and I really don't want to give one of these away. I'm gonna throw a forehand through this gap. That's what we're gonna do. I hit the gap. Be stable. <sighs> the 
dude that is so much harder than it looks hole four a4 about 240 feet you want to hit this dead straight gap and you want something to kind of hyzer out pretty hard which i don't know if this is the right disc for if i'm being honest this one of all of their a series this is the only one that i've really struggled to like um it feels good in the hand at the bottom of the rim it has this weird indention that even makes like sort of a whistling noise when you throw it which that part's cool a bit of a uniqueness to it not necessarily bad um but it's not the most comfortable for me i wonder if y'all heard that whistle that'd be so cool if you did might have went far hit the gap though but i think i'm pretty sure i'm like 30 feet long i've already said it at the beginning of the video but i do want to say it again just a huge thank you to prodigy discs for sending these out for me to review and just working with the channel um they've been so nice and so kind you need to go check them out at prodigydisc.com they have so many great plastics and molds to choose from definitely not the most expensive discs on the market which is always a good thing as well so go check them out and again thank you so much and huge shout out to prodigy that's gonna be tough That was a great putt. Good par save. All right, hole five, A5, 200 feet, very uphill. That tree might have helped. Sort of yanked it, but it didn't turn over. A little bit short, kind of yanked the forehand over. I was not expecting to get the birdie on this hole. Ha! You're not getting a disc now. All right, we're one down finally, so y'all aren't getting a disc, maybe. Anything could happen. Hole six, we're gonna use the Distortion. This is Kevin Jones' collaboration, like tour series disc that he has with Prodigy. Very similar to the A5, and honestly, from what I can tell, they have very, very similar flights. This hole is only 235 feet. Definitely a forehand shot if you've got it. It's downhill, so it probably plays even less than that. We have a headwind. Go in. Do it. Oh my gosh. That probably wasn't even close, but it, you know, it always feels like it. That's how much wind was blowing when I threw this, but I also left it 30 feet short. And now I have a downhill death putt. <laughs> Whew, that's kind of scary. All right, if you've made it this far, we're at hole seven. We're one down. I got three more holes. All I got to do is maintain that one underscore. This hole is only 190, but it is a super, super tight tunnel gap. Um, since we've already used all six discs in order, now I get to pick what I want to use. And I'm going to pick the A1 because I'm going to force it over on a flex line just to try to give myself a putt. Dude, turns out I was aiming at the wrong basket. Doesn't really matter, but. It's a hole eight. So I wanna take a second and talk about these approach discs, this A series. Um, one of my favorite things about them is not only the simplicity of how they're named and how the flight numbers are labeled, but also it feels like all of them have a very similar overstable finish. So it's like whichever of their A-series fits best into your hand and flies best for you, they have a disc for you, which is super cool because a lot of companies only have one or two approach discs and if they're either too understable, too overstable, don't feel right or whatever. Hole eight, we still have one down, so I just got two more holes. Hopefully, I mean, honestly, I'd like to shoot better than one down, but the goal that I don't have to give away a disc is just shooting under, so we're good. It's about 311 feet, plays downhill for sure. It's a very, very tight gap all the way through, and the basket finishes to the right. So I'm going to go with the forehand. I think I'm going to use the A2 in this 300 soft plastic because I want something that I can throw just not too incredibly hard on hyzer that should flip up and push but still have a really strong finish. That's trouble. All right, I'm gonna throw the A3 and try to just get out of here. 
get right. At least 50 feet to safe par. So, probably gonna take bogey, which means <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a birdie on hole nine and I have no idea what it looks like. That's not gonna be an easy bogey. That was clutch. Especially in a headwind. Here's the deal. From the long tee pad to the short basket is like over 300 feet in an on and off cross and headwind. No way I'll be able to get any of these discs over 300 feet, especially in a headwind. So I moved up to the short tee pad, which now makes it a 230 foot shot. Still behind that same evergreen tree and it plays really, really far uphill, which means roll away and probably still playing like 250 at least. I'm gonna go with the A1, because I know it's overstable. Hopefully, give myself a putt. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't, you can't tell, but that is not a putt. I know you probably can't see me right now. <laughs> My only chance is to throw the putt in with a forehand. No way. Dude, that was so close. Oh my goodness. I'll let you know who won in the comments in a couple of weeks. So final thoughts, A1, um, very, very overstable, almost identical to the A2. It just has a bead and a little bit more bite than the A2 does. Um, both of them are great discs. They feel amazing on forehand and backhand. It's really just your preference. Do you want a bead or no bead? Um, very, very similar stabilities. The A3 and the A4, um, very, very, very different discs. The A4 has a very different and kind of unique bottom of the rim. It kind of like, um, it's almost like it's shaved off and goes inward. Um, and this is probably the straightest of the A series. And then you have the A3, which I think is probably the most overstable. This seems to be even more overstable than the A1 and the A2, especially on forehand. So if you're looking for a very torque resistant, like borderline zone OS disc, the A3 is for you for sure. The A4, uh, very, very straight and even Heiser flips some on backhand. And I think you can see that in a video on like hole five. I'm not sure. Both of these great options. You have the A5 and the distortion. These are definitely the most similar. Personal favorite of all these A series though, honestly, is the A5. It's just as straight as the A4. The box is flying away bad box um, it's just as straight as the a4 but it does have a little bit more overstable finish than the a4 does and it's a lot more smoother out of the hand for me and feels better in the hand overall as well the distortion flies almost identical to this a5 and honestly the rims are almost identical as well distortion might have a little bit sh more shallow of a rim if you're looking for a more shallow feel in the hand, I would definitely go with the distortion over the A5, but if you like a little bit deeper of a disc, I would say the A5 over the distortion. Really, it's just your pick, whichever feels best. Last thing I'll say is that's probably one of my favorite things about this disc, among the other favorite things, is that all of these have different flights and different feels, and they have so many options to choose from. Like, if you go through Prodigy and look at their A-series discs, you'll be able to find an approach disc that works really good for you. Uh, and what feels best in your hand. So again, huge thank you to Prodigy Discs. See you on the next one. And as always, I'll post like a, a derpy clip at the end of this video. And this one um, is pretty derpy. See you on the next one. If I ace this, I get to keep all the discs. That's the rule. Oh no. You're probably not gonna want that one.